Good evening, one and all, and a warm welcome to all of you. It's indeed an inspiring evening. The warmth flowing in our hearts is a testimony to it. Because our motto is saying, help India breathe. I am Jai Singh, your host for the evening. Now we are going to move forward and Kolkata ki taraf rukh karte hain. It's time now for us to meet Ms. Saira Shah Haleem. She is a social peace activist. She's a, she's a TEDx speaker. She's an educator. She's a writer. And she is a regular speaker at the literary festivals across the country. She is a dear friend to me. I treat her as an elder sister or a sister or a younger sister. I... <laughs> It's, it, it's, it's a beautiful uh, conversation whenever we speak about, be it country, be it about children, be it about education. We always uh, keep on and on and on. We have judged few school competitions together. And it has always been a pleasure to speak to her. And I would now like to welcome Saira Shahali. Thank you so much, Jaydeep. Uh, thank you so much, Samir Ji and the Sikh Chamber of Commerce for having me over. And uh, it's a pertinent cause and uh, Jaydeep has always been associated with worthy causes right from the time I've known him. Someone who's uh, ready to put his best foot forward, be it any anything, you know, we've seen how we were talking, Kuljit uh, Ji was talking about community. So when we talk about community, it doesn't necessarily mean a religious, the, the religious community. It could be people together who believe in a common cause in a common uh, with a common uh, ideology common right. uh, worthy causes i think that is what community is when you work in a commune when you get people and you put together because one and one is not two one and one is 11 right yes right right, right. so uh aapa sabse pehle shuru karte hain uh, you are married to a doctor fahad right. bhai is a doctor so if i ask you about Awareness and COVID, awareness about COVID. What would you suggest people? How can we take care of ourselves? See, I will leave the medical part to Dr. Halim. Now, I will talk from the, as I talk to you, I think more like about how parents are coping with children of different age groups in this uh, whole anxious phase. Right. Right. To how to keep yourself calm, how to keep yourself sane, and I'll also address issues of mental health. Right. I've had uh, a lot of friends who experienced bouts of uh, extreme uh, emotions. They were unhappy, some of them felt suicidal, some of them felt dismayed, some of them felt depressed. So, there are a whole lot of uh, different emotions that people are going through. So I'll just address those and sure. especially as a working parent on how you can keep your children calm uh, in this uh, unprecedented time. So hopefully uh, from this discussion, there'll be some takeaways and people would uh, be right. able to you know, gain something because I've been Jee. hearing only wonderful speaker. So see, primarily, Jadeep, as a mother of uh, two young girls, one is of a different uh, age group, one is uh, like really young. So, uh, what happens is there's a lot of anxiety around exams, especially right. for children who are giving their 10th and class 12th board exams. Right. So my elder daughter is giving her IC, ICSC, you know, she's studying in La Martinia. So, right now, everything um, is uncertain. Right. So she's feeling this sense of uncertainty all around because we don't know what the government is going to decide upon next. So right. I've told her to keep calm and touch wood by the grace of God. She's been a brilliant student. She's got amazing marks in her pre-boards and otherwise all over. Right. So that's a different kind of anxiety when you don't know what the future holds. You know, whether the exams will happen, not happen, whether it will get cancelled, not cancelled. And the children, you know, they've worked the entire year. They've really slogged it out. Right. And the younger one, what I did is, Jaydi, the entire year, there has to be some structure. Right. You know, you can't be like, just because you have Zoom classes or perhaps you don't even have Zoom classes, you you uh, transition to uh, what do you call WhatsApp classes. It doesn't mean you're in your pajamas uh, right. on the bed and you're just receiving emails and content. And then, no, I feel it's important for parents to uh, have a little structure and discipline. 
even if right. in lockdown the right. whole habit of getting up on time i'm not saying i'm not telling parents you wake up your kids at 7:30 that right. is what we did before the lo- lockdown we ensure the children are up and ready with yes. tiffins and bottles and out you know right. by 7:30 they were out but yeah we can't have that discipline you can't expect kids to get up at 7:30 what what i'm simply iterating is some kind of decorum and some structure needs to be there in a routine so that the children don't feel that right. it's something of uh, abysmal happening something dramatically or drastically wrong with what is happening yes we understand that the circumstances are unprecedented however what we can do best in a capa- capacity is our how can we influence our circle of you know uh, like influence what we can right. do circle right. of concerns can keep getting bigger 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 but the circle of influence what you can influence in your image its surrounding is what we can influence that is keeping them calm if you feel that they need to go outdoors they they must step out outdoors once we feel that the situation is a little better right. so you know just before the advent of the second wave i had put my younger one uh, in uh, gymnastic classes she went out with the mom she took the driver she took the car she was having her daily activity she was having classes thrice a week so you know jaydi there's something to look forward to right so you have and then i had her tutor come home i had right. a drawing teacher come home but this is when the situation was l- little better 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 i'm not talking about the second wave right now when we all are in the lockdown so right. hopefully when the situation is a little better say about a month down the line or something it is right. very important to give the children a, a sense of community again i'm harping on right. the word community where they don't feel isolated i was i was talking to a can you hear me up yes yeah absolutely please i was talking to like since my classes are my my online classes uh, happen every day uh, twice a week for for the children one of the mothers she said something which which actually moved me she gave birth to a baby boy last year and she said that all he has seen is people with masks hmm. so the moment you know i i take him out he he starts crying and i cannot stop him and the elder one has become so cranky and now the parents have kept the patience for a very long time hmm. parents kept patience for a very long time they they yeah. cooked whatever the kids wanted they gave them whatever they wanted but now i think with the kids the parents are also uh, you know losing, losing patience. patience what what would you what would you tell the parents i know jaytib i think your concern is valid and a lot of parents are losing concern uh, losing patience but what i would do is try and normalize routine you know right. because i know they can't go out they can't go to restaurants they can't meet their friends however what we can do is we can have little virtual uh, let them have a virtual interface with their children right with birthdays have you know somebody to deliver little uh, treats to their batchmates and have right. a little virtual meeting with them so that there's a sense of community there's a sense of belonging you know because they're missing right. outdoor activity they're missing on their classes outdoor classes the school the whole right. feeling of going to school initially everybody enjoyed it wow you know i don't have to get up in the morning and go to school however the children miss their batchmates they miss their teachers they, they miss that whole sense of going so i think what we can do is uh, the situation the pandemic is not in our hand however what is in our hand is the impact that the covid-19 can have on our lives as well as the young ones and one thing that we really need to agree that we keep talking about doctors definitely they deserve all the frontline uh, workers deserve our respect however what we also need to applaud are the children who have been right. so resilient and so reticent at, at this uh, time they're braving it out here we are dealing with deaths statistics there's news every day so what i'm just talking about is is good to be informed i i have i have 50 of them from india uk us and nigeria i i i get to hear different things i i give 5 minutes 
to them to talk whatever they want. It's not yeah. always about the classes. It's always not about what we are learning in the Free class. Speech, it's, yeah. it's also about what they feel, what they want to say. Their only question, like I've written songs for them. I've written mm. scenes for them. Ye sab kab khatm hoga, hum bahar kab the only question, the only question, uh, which, you know, that the teenagers are asking me and I was, I was moved. I was surprised. I was worried. They were like, sir, will we be able, will we be normal ever? Mm. Will we be able to go out the way we used to go out with our friends to a mall? Or will the weddings be ever normal? Will we be able to go to the school normally? Will we be able to drink water from the school cooler normally? Mm, so, right. you know, these questions, they move you, they, they scare you up. You can't, you can't look scared to them you because can't. they look up to you. But the thing is, there is so much happening and uh, all we can do with these kids is make them feel strong, make them feel positive and, and, and do a constructive conversation with them. I agree, you know, because like what I said is, uh, they, they, they are discussions that happen at home. We also discuss the COVID-19 situation, what is happening, beds are, uh, we don't have beds, we don't have oxygen tanks, what is happening, we do uh, this little critique on, uh, you know, the government and your things. So uh, children do hear all of that. However, right. what I'm saying is, uh, it's important for them to understand, uh, to be, to remain positive. And right. uh, even if you're doing yoga, for example, even if you uh, are not going to a physical class, you, we can make the transition into an online class so that right. children feel that they're not losing out. Yes. So her math tutor was coming, you know, till recently. So what I asked her is, sir, till the situation is not better, can we have an online class? So that transition, you know, and I think uh, as the human species, we've been so reticent, the way we've transitioned into carrying on with our lives, earning our daily bread, keeping the children sane, moving on. We've, we've lost people. I personally, you were talking about friends you've lost. I, you know, my Facebook wall has become an obituary uh, post. I understand. Every other day I'm hearing of people I actually hang out with. They're not some far off people or I, of friends. I completely, Personal I completely agree people, good friends have lost in the pandemic and very close family members. My husband was down with uh, COVID last year and he was quite critical. It was uh, very alarming to visit him in the ICU and back and forth and still keep the children calm and tell, you know, kind of explain to them that things will be all right. So... Appa, Appa, coming back to a, a, a beautiful gesture, a beautiful thing which Fuad Bhai has been doing, right? Because it's it's, it's community service. Wo Sikh kare, Musliman kare, Hindu kare, Christian kare, koi bhi kare, uh, acha kaam, acha hota hai. Would you please tell everyone about, uh, you know, the, the dialysis which, yeah. which uh, Fuad Bhai started and uh, which was just for a nominal 50 rupees and, and how it helped people in Calcutta? So uh, there's this NGO that my husband, uh, you know, and all of us, his school friends and some relatives, family members, we are running. It's uh, by the name of Kolkata Swas Sankalp. And uh, we run the lowest cost dialysis center in Eastern India. So what we decided is that during the lockdown, we will administer a single dialysis session for just 50 rupees. So right. all the national media also covered it. And uh, I felt that why should we deprive of the, the poor who, who were unable to take this, uh, you know, what you call dialysis? Why not right. reduce it and make things better in the pandemic for people who are underprivileged? Mm -hmm. So that is what we did. And uh, it was quite successful. And we are still carrying on with that initiative. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Appa. Thank you so very much for joining us. And hope to see you soon in another session. Thank you so much Thank for having you. me over and uh, and I hope all, all your friends who are listening in, please contribute generously to a worthy cause. Thank you so much, uh, Sikh Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Jaydeep. It was lovely having you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sairabha. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.